The following opinions are solely those of BoatTest.com and its test captain. Hi, Christopher Hughes for BoatTest.com and today I'm going to conduct a full test and review on the Bayliner 642. Let's see what she has to offer. We'll begin our look with the operational features starting with the engine. Remove one cushion, two latches. I do appreciate that the engine compartment opens aft. Notice how high it opens, how large it is, so if you're on the water this is easy to access as well. We have uh, support struts plus two safety straps. As you can see, the Mercruiser 4.3 liter MPI 220 horsepower engine is fully accessible for checking and maintenance. This tube is actually for our two inch deck drain and note that it does not drain into the bilge, it drains overboard. Aft and to port, we have our hydraulic steering, here's our reservoir, our pump, again easily accessible. The engine battery is located directly below this hatch to starboard for ease of access and maintenance. Three molded in steps and a handrail make it easy to go forward to check the anchor locker, which is big and deep. I'd like to see an anchor road cleat up here, close to the roller stock. It's noteworthy that the boat has six six-inch cleats, not the usual three or four we often see in class. The helm is ergonomic, and the wheel tilts for use when standing. There is room in the middle of the dash for a moving map display, and the bucket seat has a sturdy bolster, is easily adjustable fore and aft, and it swivels 360 degrees. The Bayliner design team has worked hard on making this boat look as sleek and modern as possible with the striking skylights on the foredeck, the new hull graphics, and this sculptured relief in the top sides. The swim platform measures seven and a half feet with exactly two feet fore and aft. Now let's take the 642 out for a spin on the river and see how she does with two people on board. The Bayliner 642 is 21 feet four inches length overall has an 8 foot 5 inch beam and a dry weight of 3,084 pounds. Our test weight with two people on board and 15 gallons of fuel was 4,349 pounds. The 220 horsepower 4.3 liter Mercruiser was driving through an Alpha 1 lower unit equipped with a 14.15 inch in diameter by 21 pitch three bladed aluminum prop. We recorded a top speed of 42.9 miles per hour at 5,000 RPM. Best Cruise came at 3,000 RPM, where we went 26.1 miles per hour, burning 6.9 gallons per hour for a range of 112 statute miles. The 642 seemed to want to go faster, so I pushed her up to 3,500 RPM, which she liked, and there we went 31 miles per hour, burning 8.8 .8 gallons per hour for a range of 105 statute miles. The average time to plane was 6.7 seconds. It took 7.6 seconds to go 20 miles per hour and 11.3 seconds to hit 30 miles per hour. The bow rise was 12 degrees and I didn't lose sight of the horizon. Sight lines seated and on the bolster are just right for any sized captain. Her running angle was 5 degrees, just as it should be. Turns are smooth and when hard over at cruise, the speed loss was as expected, requiring just a little bump up of the throttle. The throttle position was very well suited for making small, accurate adjustments at speed. Once back at the dock, we took a look at the cockpit. All right, we have an average cockpit depth of 33 inches. Index storage is somewhat limited. It does go back three feet, but our depth is only eight inches. The bench seat in the stern wraps around and an optional table can be installed that makes it pleasant for cocktails at sundown or a picnic during the day. The back of the companion seat is adjustable and can be turned into a huge comfortable leaning post or serve triple duty as a chaise lounge facing aft or as a spotter seat. Aft, the sun pad can be propped up to turn into a chaise lounge. Note the complimentary earth tone colors, the textures, and the stylish stitching and piping in the upholstery. Under the port seating is designated storage for the table and more room for gear. Aft, there's more storage with a lift-out bin. Going below is easy and the total headroom is 52 inches. Overhead are two stylish skylights. To the sides are opening port lights with screens and under the entrance there's a hideaway portable head. Just outside is the companion console where there's a sink handy for everyone to use. Aft by the walkthrough is a shower wand and tucked under the engine hatch is a dedicated storage area for the bimini top, and no boat should be without one. 
As you can see, the 642 is nimble, versatile, and a fun boat in which to take friends and family out on the water. So that's our detailed look at the Bayliner 642, a practical all-around boat that doesn't break the bank. For BoatTest.com, I'm Christopher Hughes.